This video can be used as a study guide for your Excel exam. Let's go to ULEARN, Excel Files, and the file that we're going to be using is called Excel Practice Exam. Open it up. Again, the name of the file is Excel Practice Exam. The file is made up of four sheets. Case one finished. This is the end result. This has our answers. Case one summary finished also has our answers. And we're going to start off on the sheet called case one not finished. We're going to start up in cell A1 and we're going to merge and center that cell. The steps to merge and centering is to highlight across the width of the page, step one, and then just click on merge and center. Next, we're going to go into cell A2 and we're going to use the now function. And what the now function does it gives you today's date and also the time. Click on f of x. Type in now. Click on go. Once when now is highlighted, you can click on OK. There are no arguments to this function, so you're going to click OK again. The results, today's date, and also the time. Now we want to take the results of that now function and once again merge and center it. So we're going to highlight it first. We have our now function. We're going to highlight it across the width of the page. and then click on Merge and Center. Next, we're going to highlight from cell A3 all the way over to L3. We're going to make that information bold and also center it and then click on wrap text once again wrap text which gives us this type of a result right here Next, we're going to go into cell B9, and we're going to auto sum the revenue for quarter one. We're summing from cell B4 all the way down to B8. Click the check mark. And drag this across. Next, we're going to go into cell F4 and we're going to sum for each of the stores the sales. Auto sum from B4 to E4. Hit enter. Whenever we want to double check our formula, we can double click within the cell and it will graphically show us what we're doing. 
we're summing from B4 all the way to E4. Copy that pattern down to here. Next, let's go into cell A4. Right now, it's showing A4 is store 1 and A5 is store 1. We want to change that. So we have store 1 through 5. So we're within cell A4 and we're going to use autofill to copy that down and let Excel do the work for us. So that now we have listed store 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Next, we're going to go into cell G4 and we're going to calculate each store's contribution as a percentage of the total. The formula for that is equal sign 250 divided by 3453. Now the key here is that the 3453 will always be in the denominator. It's fixed. It's a constant. In Excel talk, it's called an absolute. So for instance, when we go to store 2, it would be 1,000 divided by 3453. When we go to store 3, once again, it would be 1,000 divided by 3453. The key point here is that F9, that 3453, that's fixed. It's a constant. And how we make it fixed or a constant is by hitting the F4 key. What's happened here now by hitting the F4 is that we've made that 3453 an absolute. And we know it's an absolute because there's now a dollar sign F dollar sign 9. We're going to copy that pattern all the way down. And if we double click within here, we can see the results. F8 divided by dollar sign F dollar sign 9. F7 divided by dollar sign F dollar sign 9. Our absolute, our constant, is in the cell F9, and you make it a constant or an, F, or an absolute by hitting the F4 key. Next, let's go into cell H4, and we're going to use the IF function to determine which stores should remain open and which stores should be closed. So we're in cell H4. To get the IF function, we're going to click on F of X, type in IF, click Go, IF is highlighted, Click OK. There's three arguments to the IF function. You have the condition or the logical test. Row 2, the value if the condition is true. And row 3, the value if the condition is false. So let's start off with our condition in row 1. The condition is, if the percentage of the total, that happens to be in G4, if that value is less than 
10%, which means 0 0.10. That's our condition. Second line, if that's true, we're going to close that store. Otherwise, it's going to remain open. Click OK and copy this pattern down. As you can see here, these are the stores that are less than 10, the ones that will be closed. Now, sometimes you want to accentuate those results. And a way of doing that is by using conditional formatting. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to highlight this range from H4 down to H8. Come up here and click on conditional formatting. Next, we're going to go down to highlight cell rules. And then we're going to click on text that contains. So we're going to format We've highlighted the area, and we're going to format those cells that contain the text close. So we're going to type in close. And hit OK. And as we can see here, what's happened is that those stores that are going to be closed have now been colored in. Now, if we ever make a mistake doing our conditional formatting, the way, the way to edit that information is by clicking on conditional formatting, going down to clear rules, and we then have the ability to clear that formatting from selected cells or from the entire sheet. And then we could start over from the beginning. Next, we're going to clear out this information here in cell L9. So click on it, right click, go down to Spark Lines, and then we're going to highlight Clear selected spark lines. So that's been cleared out. Next we're going to average our sales for quarter one, two, three, four, and also the total. The way to do that is to highlight the information here. Click on Average, double check your formula, and that is right, Average B4 to B8, and drag that across.